How fast can you go? Can you run a five-minute mile? Can you reduce your daily commute time by 10% per year? Can you make 100% of your free throws? Can you earn $100 million next year? Can you achieve a zero defects goal? A system can only give you what it is designed to give you. Most organizations want to go faster. They want to get better results, lower accident rates, higher profits, and greater levels of customer loyalty. In spite of their best efforts, which include the investment of literally millions of dollars in process improvement tools and training, many organizations remain frustrated. They're not getting the types of results they expected their efforts, dollars, and tools to provide. Why can't they go faster? From an old-school quality perspective, the answer to this question is simple. Their systems are not capable of going faster. Most organizational leaders are not willing to accept such a simple answer, however. They don't really understand their work systems, and they are caught up in the prevailing belief that the primary reason for their less-than-desirable rate of improvement lies in their people not trying hard enough. Their solution for going faster normally involves asking or ordering people to work harder, pay more attention, and make fewer errors. They might send their people to training in the hope that the new skills that are covered will somehow motivate their folks to higher levels of performance. But rarely is such an approach accompanied by fundamental system changes. If you don't change your work systems, you will not get better results. Thinking it is possible to get better results without changing the system is analogous to wishing that you could run a marathon under four hours when currently your body and maybe even your mind is not even capable of finishing a marathon. Systems produce waste, and they affect internal and external customer satisfaction in identical ways, whether your measurement dashboards are set up to tell you that these results are happening or not. Unfortunately, the amount of variation contained in these systems is quite large. Do you know how much variation exists in each of your key work systems? A system can only give you what it is designed to give you. If you want better results, you have to change at least one, if not more than one, work system. Why can't we go faster? Faulty work systems are similar to restrictor plates on NASCAR vehicles. We ask our people to drive faster, but we leave the restrictor plates on at the same time. If we want to go faster, we have to take the plates off. We have to change our work systems in order to sustain higher levels of performance. A few years back, in the process of personally searching for the answer to the why can't we go faster question, I came up with the NASCAR restrictor plate analogy. In NASCAR, restrictor plates are required on only two of the tracks that are part of the racing circuit, Daytona and Talladega. Why are restrictor plates required on these two courses, but not the others? The answer is simple, for safety reasons. The Talladega track, for example, has a 4,000-foot backstretch. If restrictor plates were not required on that course, we would have a much higher frequency of accidents because of the increased speeds heading into the curve at the end of that longer-than-normal backstretch. In NASCAR, however, the restrictor plates are intentionally installed. In our organizations, we have placed restrictor plates on our key work systems without even realizing that we were doing so. For example, the systems we use to define the jobs of our people, how they spend their time each day, easily set us up for going slow as opposed to fast. Most job descriptions, be they frontline focused or managerial in nature, do not have much time designed into them for process improvement. We might expect our supervisors to be team leaders or to assist process improvement teams through data analysis, but we build little time into their jobs for actually performing that added work. In turn, the real work gets the attention. Normally, these people will try to support the initiative anyway through the dedication of extra hours to that work, but over time, no pun intended, spending the extra hours wears thin and these people revert back to the old way of doing their jobs. You might still have the desire to go faster, but the job design restrictor plate is in place. 
You won't begin to pick up speed until you take off that restrictor plate, replace the old habits and ways of thinking with new ones. What types of restrictor plates have you placed on or designed into your work systems? Three key process excellence restrictors. Employee turnover rates are high. You can't spend time on process improvement if you keep spending time bringing new people up to speed. Span of control ratios are too large. Spans of control have gotten very out of control in many, if not most, organizations. Little time exists for process improvement. You can't go to the bank and take out a time loan, and most people aren't going to spend more time on the job. If you're not willing to address the three key performance restrictors presented here, you might as well admit that you're not going to sustain process excellence. This sounds like a pretty bold statement, but if you think about it, you will see the logic in my claim. The foundational argument here is that process improvement takes time. It takes time to properly define processes, to effectively measure them on a daily basis, to analyze performance trends, and to find the true systemic causes of process waste. Finally, it takes time to put fixes in place that actually keep your problems from coming back. If you don't invest the time, you can't improve. High employee turnover rates create the need to spend time on tasks that are not process improvement related. At a minimum, new employees have to be oriented and trained, and time must also be invested to properly process those people that leave. Unfortunately, because new people rarely do their jobs right immediately after being hired, their work efforts result in higher error rates and, in turn, process problems that time must be invested to correct. What is really crazy is that while turnover rates may be increasing, span of control ratios, the number of people each supervisor must supervise, are increasing as well. If process improvement, let alone excellence, is your goal, this result is the exact opposite of what you need to have in place. As spans of control increase, a given supervisor has less time to spend with each employee. Unfortunately, new employees need more time from their supervisors than seasoned employees do. If you are wondering why your leaders don't have time to spend on process improvement, you should first look at your spans of control and your turnover rates. Self-directed work teams are a great idea, but they only work if you have well-trained, stable workforce. Somewhere along the line, someone acquired the notion that it is possible to have effective self-directed teams while also trying to deal with the demands of high employee turnover. On top of it all, most leaders don't have that much time built into their jobs for process improvement to begin with, if you actually look at how their jobs are designed. How to Destroy Improvement Initiatives Ignore Process Capability Fail to recognize improvement success. Ignore non-operations processes. Restrict information flows. Rely only on project teams. Lay off people as processes are improved. Allow leaders to behave badly. Provide little time for projects. These eight barriers to sustained performance improvement are deeply entrenched in the cultures of many organizations. The degree to which they are rooted in our mental models of how work should be done depends largely on the age of the organization, the nature of the product or service being performed, the location of the facility itself, and the process that was used to hire the people that currently work there. In short, these changes are common, cultural, and tough to change. They are also probably very familiar to you. The positive thing is that the systems you can install for minimizing their impact are relatively simple in design and easy to use. All you must do is decide that they need to be changed and be willing to live with the short-term discomfort that comes from trying to shift your own mental models about how things are or should be from an organizational design perspective. For example, are you willing to commit to not laying people off as improvements are made? Are you willing to measure leadership behavior? Many people don't have time built into their jobs for projects, even though project-driven system changes are needed to create a high-performance workplace. 
people often expect certain levels of performance to be reached, even though the existing systems are not capable of performing consistently at those levels. Leaders are allowed to behave as they wish. They don't communicate enough with their people, and when they do, that communication is often negative. Certain processes are ignored while others are analyzed to death. Frontline processes are expected to become leaner and produce fewer defects, but often administrative processes are allowed to stay the same. Instead of being recognized in a positive manner for their improvement successes, people often see the jobs of their friends or even their own jobs being eliminated. Have you seen any of these barriers kill a performance improvement effort in your work lifetime? Unfortunately, I have. All too often.